There are obvious benefits to short form content. I would spend so much time creating this content only to turn around and do it again tomorrow, which is why I found a much easier way to do it. My name is Nick Nelbach and in this video, I'm going to be covering four time hacking tips to help you edit your videos faster and easier using CapCut and TimeBolt. So let's get into it. Tip number one is batch recording your social media content. Recording your short form content can be a time consuming process. That's why it's important to batch record your content. Instead of recording just one video, set aside a block of time where you can record multiple videos videos in one sitting. This will not only save you time, but keep you in that creative mindset while you're recording each video. As an example, set aside about 30 minutes or a few hours or however long it takes you to record your content and try to record 10 to 15 videos all in one shot. That's now 10 to 15 pieces of content that you can edit and publish over the course of the next week or two. And if you keep on the theme of batching your creative processes, you can block out time to edit your videos on specific days. And in doing so, you'll ensure that you never run out of short form content to create. Now, here's a little pro tip, and it's going to really help us in the process when we start using TimeBolt, and it's going to save you a ton of time. Script out all the videos that you want to record ahead of time and record them all in one shot. That's one recording. If you mess up, just keep the camera rolling until you get it right and do this for all of your videos. It'll be much easier to edit down one long clip than a hundred little mini clips that you now have to edit together. And remember, the key to effective batch recording is planning. Decide on your topics ahead of time. Write down an outline or a rough script for each of your videos. Make sure you have all the equipment you need set up and ready to go before you start recording. Tip number two, use TimeBolt for all of your heavy lifting. Now this is where the magic happens. We're going to use TimeBolt for all the tedious little things that make video editing a total pain in the ass like removing dead space or cutting out the clips that we don't want from the video. So this is what TimeBolt is going to look like when you come into it for the very first time. Now, before we actually upload a video, first we're going to click on settings and we're going to check on all of these audio pre-processing settings, audio normalization, noise reduction, and volume increase. This creates a consistent audio profile for your video, which makes it much easier for TimeBolt to cut up your video and automate a lot of this process. So once you check these settings on, you're going to have to restart the app and TimeBolt will remember these settings so you don't have to go in each time to set those on. Now that you have them set, they're good to go. And just note when you're listening back to your video, these will make your video sound a little weird and choppy, but that's only during the editing process. Your audio will sound normal again once you export out of TimeBolt. Step one, we're going to load in our video file. Drop the file in, and our TimeBolt is going to start doing its thing. Now right away here, I'm going to change the preview playback speed to one and a half times. This is just going to help us get through all of these clips much faster. And here you can see all of these sections on our timeline, red and green. Red is everything that's going to get cut out of our video and green is everything that is going to stay in. Step two, dial in your settings. Next, we're going to scroll down here to silence detection options. And this is where we're going to set our silence detection settings based on your editing style. By default, the filter below sound level in dB is going to likely be set to negative 35 decibels. TimeBolt themselves recommends you keep this between negative 35 and negative 40. As a good rule of thumb, the closer this number gets to zero, the more audio that's going to get cut out and turned into red over here. On the flip side, the more negative or the further away from zero you go, the less audio is going to get cut out and you might end up with all of this being green when we don't really want that. Now these other settings, remove silence longer than and ignore detections shorter than. These are the default settings. I always leave these as is and in most cases this does a perfect job. Now the last setting that you want to adjust is the left padding and right padding. The left padding is going to determine how much of the clip is going to be cut on the front end of the audio and the right padding is going to be how much audio is left on the back end of the audio clip. If you want to very fast edit and quick cuts in your video, you likely want to leave this at 0.01. And if you want a little bit more of a relaxed cut and flow to your video, then you might want to jump this up to 0 0.02 or 0 0.03. Now, typically for our right padding, we want to leave this at 0.15. We want a little bit more extra space on the back end of the clip and TimeBolt themselves actually recommends don't going any lower than 0.15. So for the sake of this video, we're just going to leave it right at the default settings. Now, once you've updated your DBs here and you've maybe made some tweaks to your left and right padding, all you have to do is hit update silence detection and TimeBolt will re-ingest that video and start working through with the new settings that you've applied. Step three, um, check yourself before you wreck yourself. If you scroll down here to this little black and yellow button, this is the um, check detector. So when you click that, it's actually going to look for different filler words and phrases that you use in your content regularly, and it's going to cut all of that out. So first, it's going to start the audio transcription. With um, check, it's important to know you do get a few free runs of this feature, but ultimately it's going to be a pay per use kind of thing. TimeBolt uses a very advanced transcription software 
software that makes it extremely accurate is costing them money every time it runs. So they're just kind of passing some of that back onto us, but really it's not too expensive. So once the transcription is complete, you can download the transcript file if you like, but we're ready to dive back into TimeBolt. So these are the type of words that TimeBolt is looking to remove inside of the um check. Um, uh, huh. And so, um, so TimeBolt's going to scan through all of this content. And then all we have to do is hit split timeline and turn off these words. Now, once again, it is going to reanalyze the information in that timeline. Now, all of our ums and ahs and so ums and all of that should be removed from this. Step number four, choosing the clips that you want to keep and which ones you want to remove. Now, TimeBolt has added some really nifty shortcuts to help you breeze through this part of the process. So we're going to go through some of those here. Once you start playing back through the video, TimeBolt is only going to play through the clips that are highlighted in green or the clips that we want to keep. So now we don't have to go listen through all of the dead space that shows up in this video. And we can simply do that by clicking on the space bar. As you're playing through, maybe there's a clip that you want to split. You can either hit the create split button here, or you can just hit S on your keyboard and you can see that it made a cut right in that clip. Now there's a couple different ways that we can turn these clips on and off. And as you get more comfortable working with TimeBolt, the keyboard shortcuts are definitely going to be your best friend. So we want to remove this clip right here. We want to keep this section, but we want to remove this section. We can either click on the top bar here, which turns it to red, or we can click it back and it turns it back into green. And we can do the same thing with all of these clips that show up here. Now, as you're listening through this clip, you know that this part was one that you wanted to remove rather than stopping the playhead, coming in, clicking and continuing moving on. You can just click the B key on your keyboard and it will remove the previous clip that is enabled. And as you keep clicking B, it's just going to remove more clips further back. This becomes pretty nifty and helps you really fly through the editing process. Likewise, if you want to cut the clip that you're on, you can simply click O and it will remove that clip. So once you played through all of these videos, you've made your cuts where you need to make your cuts. You removed the clips that you want to remove. Remove that one. We're going to split this one. You're going to play through this entire thing. You're going to remove all the clips that you want to remove. So you're only left with the green pieces that you want to keep. Now, if you want to make your videos a little more interesting and engaging for the viewer, we can actually add punch in zoom effects automatically right here as we're editing the video. Now to do that, you're going to right click and you're going to choose punch in. And there's three different options here for the punch in percentage. If we click punch in 8%, zooms in a little bit, punch in 12%, a little bit more, punch in 20%, even a little bit more yet. Or you can simply click P on your keyboard and it will cycle through all the different punch in percentages. Now, depending on your video, maybe 8%, 12%, and 20% isn't exactly what you want. You can actually come up into the settings here and you can adjust what these punch in percentages are for your own video. As you're playing through the video, you can edit in your punch ins as well as removing the clips that you don't want to keep. Remove that one and we're going to punch in that one. Now, all of these punch in zoom effects are going to be applied to your videos. Now, step number five is exporting your videos. When it comes to exporting your videos out of Time Bolt, we have several different options that we can choose from. One, we can export all of this into one video clip. So in this case, TimeBolt will keep all of the green sections of our video and combine it into one video export. Now to do that, all you have to do is come down to the bottom and click add to render queue. And now here you can see it says ta render task queued. If you click this render queue button up here, you can see all of the tasks you have queued up. And all you have to do is click start rendering and your video is going to export out of TimeBolt. The next thing you can do is you can export clips out of TimeBolt. So rather than exporting everything as one video, we can export each of these green sections as individual clips that we can then load into another editing software like CapCut. Now to do that, we're going to scroll back down here to the rendering options, click this three little dots icon, and now we're going to click export clips to folder. Here you're going to pick where you want to save it. And now TimeBolt has exported each one of those green sections as an individual clip. So after you've gone through and you've cleaned up all of the footage on your timeline here, TimeBolt will actually tell you how much dead space and clips you've cut out of the original file. So in this case, it's a seven minute and eight second clip and the estimated output duration is two minutes. It very quickly cut out a a lot of stuff that we didn't need that probably would have taken us way longer than we needed to in something like Premiere or DaVinci Resolve or even doing it in CapCut ourselves. Tip number three, use CapCut for captions and fine tuning your edit. So with our video edited and exported from TimeBolt, now we can get into CapCut and start adding things like captions or making any other tweaks that we want to the actual video itself. So we're going to come into CapCut, we're going to click new project. And now I'm just going to pull in all of the clips that we exported out of TimeBolt. When it comes to short form content, I really prefer using the clips as opposed to to the long version. And the reason I prefer that is because of the auto captions. I found that when I import a long clip and I cut it up manually inside of CapCut, I'm spending a lot more time messing with the auto captions and making sure that they fit the clips just right. When I'm importing the clips and I run auto captions on the individual clips themselves, CapCut actually does a lot better job of lining up those captions with the individual clips. It's weird. I don't understand why that is, but it is what it is. Then you're going to drag your clips to the timeline. And now we have all of our cut down clips right here, ready to edit. So step number two, you're going to 
fine tune your edits. This is where you can come in and really start having fun with the editing process. And once you have all of your clips and everything edited, you have your keyframe to add where you want to add them. Maybe you added some stickers or some text on the screen. And next we're going to go and add auto captions. So we're going to come up and click on text and then click auto captions. And all we have to do is click create and Timebolt is going to do its thing and create captions for our entire video. So here we can see we have all of our captions loaded into the video and ready to go. And now we can just tweak these. We can make some changes. Typically, I like to use Montserrat for my font. Maybe I'll bring this font size up a little bit and we can actually apply some preset styles to it as well. But once you have all that done, you're ready to export this video and you're good to go. Now, the thing is, all of these different short form video content platforms allow different durations for the videos that you can publish. As an example, TikTok, you can upload up to 10 minutes of video. Instagram Reels, you can upload up to 90 seconds. And YouTube Shorts, you can only upload 60 seconds. So what happens if you get done editing and you are just beyond the threshold of being able to publish to all three platforms? In this case, our video is a minute and three seconds. And now we can't publish this to YouTube Shorts as a short because it is too long. Now, obviously, if there's a little bit of filler information in here or there's something that isn't quite important enough for the short form video, you can remove it and cut that time down. But say this information is all very valuable and you don't want to cut anything out because you'll end up losing some of the integrity of the content itself. We can actually take the video that we exported out of CapCut here and we can bring it back into Timebolt. So now we're going to bring our newly exported video back into Timebolt. So here is everything cut clean and ready to go. And again, you can see that we are at a minute and three seconds. This is where we're going to use Timebolt's turbo mode. So scroll all the way down and click activate turbo mode. Here we can set the estimated duration that we want this video to be in, or we can set a speed multiplier to the video. Now we know we want this video to fit within 60 seconds. So I'm going to actually set this to 58 to give us a little bit of leeway. And you can see that it is going to speed up the video by 1.092 times. So all of the clips that we have in here are going to get sped up just a very little bit that is going to be likely unnoticeable by anybody else who's actually watching the content. But we're going to be able to publish it to all of the platforms, including YouTube Shorts. Click add to render queue and hit start rendering. And now your new video can now be published to all three of those platforms. Now, my last tip, tip number four is repurposing your long form content using Timebolt. Step number one, import your long form content into Timebolt. Say you're publishing a longer form video to YouTube, but you want to chop this video up into individual clips that you can share as shorts, TikToks, or Instagram reels. Once your long form video is loaded into Timebolt, you can see we have all of our cuts. We've already adjusted our settings here. So how do we pull short form content out of this? On the clips that you want to keep, we're going to play through the video. And when we find a piece or a clip that we want to keep for our short form content, we can right click and choose mark cut. And now you'll see that a little yellow line shows up here. This clip has now been marked. Now, similarly, we can use the keyboard shortcuts and we can click M and it will mark that clip. So we're going to come through and we're going to mark all of the clips that we want to keep for our YouTube shorts or our TikTok video. Now, once we have all of these clips selected and marked, we can actually export just the marked clips. So if we come down and scroll to the rendering options and click the three little dots, we can click add marked cuts to render queue. Now click start rendering. And now only the clips that you have marked in the timeline are actually going to be a part of that export. Just like before, we can take that clip, we can import it into CapCut, we can add our captions, we can fine tune that short form content, and we're ready to publish on all the social media platforms. Now, if you want to go back and pull more clips, we can clear the markers that we have in here. It's going to give us a little warning saying, are you sure? And then we can come back through and we can start marking up our second social media platform clip that we want to export out of here. And from there, it's just rinse and repeat. You can export as many of these little clips that you want out of the long form content. And now you're able to extend that long form content into all of the different platforms and repurpose your content for all of these other social media platforms.